Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World and today we're in Trocha, Croatia. It's a big yacht town, stuff like that, but I'm here because you'll see kind of a bigger ship way out there in the in the bay. Uh, that's the ship I'm on. I'm on a cruise ship and today we're going to talk about our kind of 10 things that you should know before you go cruising. Kind of like 10 tips for first time cruisers. Um, and the first thing I'm going to tell you is make sure you get back when they tell you to get back, okay? Because these cruise ships, look, this one's way out there and there's a tender that comes and gets you, like a little boat that comes in, picks you up from there, brings you in and takes you back out. And you may think, oh, they'll wait for me, no problem. No, the boats will not wait for you. They will leave your butt in the port, okay? So make sure you get back in time for your tender or get back in time to get back on the boat because when a boat leaves, it leaves. And you know whose job it is to get back on the boat? That's your job. So you have to figure out a way to how to get to the next town. So I did make it back, so that was nice. So don't worry about that. But I will say one thing. If you're on a smaller cruise ship, like I'm on a uh, Kosi Europe cruise here, it's only 200 people, okay? So the smaller boats with like 200 people, they're more likely to wait for you a little bit longer for that tender, a little bit longer to make sure you make it back on time to your boat. Um, but I will say, if you're going to be on one of those big cruise ships like in the Caribbean and stuff like that, or through the Mediterranean with like three or 4,000 people, those ones will not wait for you for the tender or at the docks, and that will be up to you to find your way to the next city and at your cost, okay? Now the second thing I want to tell you about for first time cruisers is when you're choosing a cruise, research is key. You need to figure out what cruise is going to be right for you because there's literally hundreds of different cruises out there in the world, okay? Whether it's going on the Yangtze River or you're going through the Mediterranean or going through, you know, Southern Africa, there's all kinds of cruises and you need to do the research because you can have cruises that only have 50 people on them or you can have it with 5,000 people on them. Imagine the scale and things like that. And a lot of times you might look at in terms of the itinerary that you're gonna look at. So size might be one thing, itinerary. I know I choose, chose this Croatia tour because it was Croatia and Montenegro. I've been to Croatia before, it was really beautiful. I wanted to see a lot more spots. I've got like eight cities in Croatia and I get to see Kotor and Montenegro. It was really cool. So you wanna look at those itineraries because if you see the ports of call and they don't interest you, it's not worth going on. So that's one thing you want to look at. Also look at what are the other opportunities that are on those boats because there's a lot of entertainment options on bigger ships. There'll be casinos and theaters and shows and you know lectures and all kinds of really cool stuff and excursions you can do. For example, on smaller boats like river cruises in Europe and, and smaller coastal cruises, usually you have more like tourist themed excursions so they'll take you to show you the sites of Dubrovnik and things like that where sometimes on these bigger boats they'll have the historic stuff then they'll have adventure things then they'll have super mega extreme adventure things like I want to go swimming with dolphins or sharks or something like that and so there's a lot of those different options too and that's something you should also look out for and if you're trying to figure out which cruise ship's gonna fit best for you, I do really recommend reading reviews, but also going to the websites, because a lot of the cruises really do show like their typical passengers on there. Because you'll see, a typical riverboat in Europe, the ages are probably 50 plus. You go in the Caribbean, you have all kinds of different ages and different goals that people have when they go on those cruises. So you might wanna check those things out to give you a better feel for the type of people that are gonna be on that cruise with you or what they're kinda of looking for. Because it's very different going for a, a very dedicated Bordeaux, France wine tour versus a Mediterranean tour that happens to stop in France. Okay, so there's those things. Now my third thing for you to know about is the cabins. Look, you're on a ship. The bigger the ship, the bigger the rooms. The smaller the ship, usually the smaller the rooms. And in general, the cabins that you stay in aren't always super big. The one I'm on in my cruise right now is actually bigger than my hotel I had in Rome before I came here. So it's usually fine, but you usually don't have a lot of storage space when you come here. So make sure you do pack lightly because you don't have a lot of space. Um, some other things with the cabin rooms you might want to know about is there's always one or less <laughs> plugs. Look, I know when you have laptops and tablets and phones and all these kind of things, you need to be able to charge stuff. And that is a tough thing because usually you might only have one plug. I know in here I have one plug in my room and I have one plug in my bathroom. So I actually have like a little travel strip that has multiple USB ports, which is safe for, for, um, for ships. I, I, you want to make sure you get one of those. So I can charge multiple devices because I have four camera batteries and I've got a phone and I've got my other, you know, and I've got all these things and backer batteries as well. 
And you want to make sure you have that because these cabins, they are going to be smaller and they're going to be, you know, with not a lot of plugs. And also, I will say is since it's kind of closed off and you've got multiple adults in there, they can get a little stinky sometimes too. Um, so you might want to bring some spray um, to cut out of some of that smell. But I talk about that in a video of what you should pack when you come on a cruise to help you out. Um, so that should give you some ideas. Now some tips to go along with your cabins is one thing is in terms of location of your cabin, you probably want to stay away from the restaurant, the bars, uh, the clubs and the pool because there's a lot of noise there. Also by elevators usually a lot of people passing through. However, if you have limited mobility, I do say get near the elevators because it'll make your life a lot easier because some of these cruise ships can be huge and it can take you a long time to get from dinner or a show down to your room. So you want to kind of consider those things. Now the next thing I want to talk about is seasickness. Now if you're going to go on a river cruise, river cruises, you don't really have to deal with seasickness too much, so you should be fine. But if you're on a coastal cruise or an ocean cruise, seasickness can be a big problem. And some of the things that they have is there's a thing called sea bands. I've seen people wear it's like a stretchy band on your wrist. There's a pressure point that goes underneath your wrist to help out there. There's a prescription patch you can put behind your ear. I have friends have used that. They said it's fantastic. Um, I actually had to use a Dramamine the other day because my tummy was like, whoa. So you can bring meds on there for that. Also, if you don't want to have any medicine, you want something more natural, ginger is actually something that does help with seasickness as well. But also, if you look at the cabin you choose, if you choose a cabin that's in the middle of the ship near the waterline, that has the least movement of all the of all the cabins, so that can help you with your with your seasickness, okay? Oh, a little add-on on the cabins. Um, usually the higher you go, the nicer they are, but the probably the best view ones is you want to get a balcony, okay? Get a balcony if you can. Those sell out quickly, so you might want to book that early, and you want to be aft towards the back of the ship, okay? Now the next thing you need to know about is the food. Look, one of the good things about coming on these cruises is the food. I'm on a French cruise, Corsi. Nice cruise, nice people, very nice food, okay? And the thing is, is this one has a nice setting and we have some buffets sometimes and you will eat very well and you will eat very much a lot. A lot of people say, oh, I put on 10 pounds on my cruise because you do have a lot. So I will warn you, do pace yourself when you are eating here because it is easy to eat a lot and keep eating. I mean, look, I'm a big guy and it's hard to say no to like some of these fantastic food they have on here, but sometimes just take a little break okay because uh, it can be a bit much um, and another thing is when you go on some of these bigger cruises you know there might be the buffets included in the price but then they have nicer restaurants and you might have to pay an upcharge to go into them but they are worth going to have a little bit more one-on-one -on -one service um, another thing you should know about the food is if you're on smaller cruises sometimes they'll have they'll give you a specific eating time like you might be the first set sitting or the second sitting or they might give you a specific table you have to go to so for example the table I'm on here here. I'm with a bunch of really nice English couples and so we're, we have our like English table and our sea of French tourists and so it is pretty nice to be there but we sit at the same spots the same table every day and I have talked to a lot of travelers and they say look that can be a big difference if you have a good trip or a bad trip is the people you sit on sit with at your table so just a heads up for that one now, my next thing about cruising is your packing in terms of what you should bring on that first day. Because you're going to have your normal suitcase, but you're also going to have a carry-on bag, okay? That carry-on bag, bring everything you think you're going to use the first day on the ship. Why? Because if you're on some of these bigger ships that have thousands and thousands of people on them, you might not get your luggage for four, five, six hours. And do you really want to get on this big ship with a great pool and, and, and slides and stuff like that with the kids and have no swimsuit? So pack your stuff, so have your swimsuit, your electronics, any medicine you need to take, always bring your medicine with you for the entire journey because you never know if you're going to be able to get that medicine um, on the ship or, or at a pharmacy at one of the ports. So bring all of those things, but have everything in that carry-on so when you get on the boat, you're not waiting, come on bags, get here, I want my swim trunks. No, you can just get to your room, change and go and it'll be a lot easier, okay? Seventh thing, tips and gratuity. Look, the people that clean your room, that keep you safe, that do the shows, that do all these things, they're not paid the greatest wage. I'm just gonna say that right now. Your tips and gratuities that you give make a difference to them. And I've met many tourists that say, I'm not, I don't believe in tipping, I'm not gonna give any gratuities. And they go and they tell people, I don't want them to have anything. 
look, these people are would risk their lives to save you, and they're doing all these things for you. I mean, think about how disgusting your room is. Yeah, they have to come here and clean it every day. Do not not tip these people, okay? Now, what's cool is some some uh, cruise lines already have the gratuity already put into the put into the bill, so it's already there. If you had a really horrible time, yes, you can go and ask them to take off the gratuity, but don't be a jerk. Don't do that, okay? Make sure you do tip them. And if they don't already, and if the cruise line doesn't already automatically um, add on the gratuity, if you go on their websites, a lot of them will tell you we recommend giving twelve dollars a day or ten dollars a day or whatever for different people so you have an idea of what you should tip, okay? Because it does make a big difference, and that's one of those things that, honestly, it's it's a nice thing to do because these people do do a lot at a very low pay. Now, my eighth thing for you is don't bring any hot stuff. <laughs> Basically, I want to look at is the things you shouldn't bring on your cruise. Um, the thing is, is the biggest danger on cruises, it's not like we're going to, it's not the sinking part, it's fire. Fire is the most dangerous thing on this ship, and so they don't want you bringing anything that could cause a fire. So I know you want to have that romantic evening with your honey bunny. Uh, no candles, okay? No candles, that fire stuff, not good, okay? Also, I know some people, oh, I'll bring my, my heating pad for to make some hot tea or something like that. Nope, don't take that either. And then there's other people like, oh, but I want my clothes to look nice. I'm going to take an iron. Yes, they're iron. People try to take irons on these ships sometimes. Look, you can't bring those things, okay? Some on the smaller ships, you might be able to sneak them through because they don't check as much. But on the bigger ships, it's like going on a plane. They they send the stuff through the x-rays machine, and they'll, they'll tell you, hey, you can't bring that in there, so you'll lose it. Or it'll just be waiting for you for when you get back onto the, to the port at the end. Um, and so you do want to be careful. Some other things that they say don't bring, obviously no weapons, no drugs, things like that. Also, a lot of cruise ships have limits on the amount of alcohol you can bring in or what kind of alcohol you can bring onto the ship. Um, I know in the bigger cruise ships, there's like no alcohol, no beer, but you might be able to bring a bottle of wine or something. In some places, they don't care that much, some do. Again, you need to figure out the rules of these things and not knowing the rules is not going to get you out of getting in trouble. And don't think by switching, oh, I'll have a bottle of water, but I'll put vodka in it. No, this isn't seventh grade, you know, <laughs> school trip stuff, guys. They, they're, they're smarter than that, okay? So, so just don't, don't bring those things, okay? The ninth thing I have for you is realize that the price you pay might not cover everything. I know it says, oh, this is a great cruise, pay this. But the thing is, you got to realize is there's going to be extra costs, okay? The excursions you go on, extra cost. The drink package, so you can just drink whatever you want, whenever you want, that might be extra. And these things can add up. That's why I always say, if you're going to do excursions, look and see which ones you really want to do. And if there's some that sound nice, you might also look at private tour guides in the port you're going to go to to set something up. So instead of you and your 50 closest friends going on this tour together, it's you and your wife and two kids and you get to have your own private tour. So you could set some of those things up and I found those sometimes to be cheaper. Um, though I will say a lot of the, at least some of the screws I'm on now, they've gotten some top notch guides so I can't really complain. So there is that. Uh, another thing is that the prices can add up if you're buying drinks one at a time and you only pay at the end, that can be a little bit of a sticker shock at the end. So do have a heads up on that one. And the thing is, if you're going to buy a liquor package or an alcohol package or whatever, beverage package for sodas, look and see is how much you're really going to drink and how much are they charging you and you can kind of figure it out because you can still buy the package when you get on the ship. And that's the thing is a lot of these things you might see is like, you know, maybe you want a bigger room. You can ask and say, hey, is there another room available? And they might be, so you pay the upcharge to get a bigger room or get a better space or get into a nicer restaurant, things like that, no problem. And that kind of just leads us into the 10th thing that new travelers should know about. Look, if you have any questions, any concerns, you need any medicine, you need anything mixed up, you need some ice, you need maybe a power strip, your, your headphones aren't working, look, ask the people on the ship. These people are here to help you. I mean, seriously, cruising, these how it used to be when you travel people really trying to help you all the time i know on our ship here to, you know today and yesterday one of my friends on the ship i made he's got a tummy ache he told the lady that ran the restaurant she made him a whole special light tummy plate to help him out his wife she doesn't eat red meat and we had beef oh this fantastic beef oh so good i love the french and their food oh. anyway but she doesn't eat red meat she told the lady she said oh i'm so sorry and she made her a fish dish that was fantastic if you have allergies 
anything out there, just ask. They'll be glad to help you, and that's what they're here for, so do do that. So, I hope these little tips can help you enjoy your first time traveling uh, on a cruise. And the thing is, a lot of these work whether you're going on a river cruise through Germany or you're heading you know, out on the, Q the Queen Elizabeth to go across the Atlantic. These things are things you should think about. If you want to learn more about traveling in general and a few more cruise videos as well, why don't you check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we really appreciate your likes and subscriptions. And if you do subscribe to our YouTube channel, we put out a new video, a travel video, every Wednesday and Saturday, and we really appreciate those likes, subscriptions, and comments. So if you have any tips for uh, first-time cruisers or, or new cruisers, please put in the comment section below so they can have some great cruises too. Bye from halfway between uh, Chordir and, and Split, Croatia. See, we're almost there. See? Look. If you can get to get out there, we're almost there. <laughs> Bye.